Hey guys, it's K7, and I'm back once again with one final update to the Citra Emulator tutorial videos. Now, the only reason I'm making this is because as of late, there has been a few updates that has been compiled together. So I want to make a fully immersed in-depth tutorial showing you how to install, how to set up, and get the Citra Emulator running at its perfect performance point so this is why I'm making this video now I've made three other Citra emulator update videos before this which you can go currently see right now they're doing really well and have a lot of good results a lot of people are still getting a little bit of problems when installing the Citra emulator so I want to make sure that I get as much information as I can within to this one video so that I don't have to make another Citra emulator tutorial video ever again so keep in mind that this will be the final Citra emulator tutorial video a fully in-depth tutorial to show you how to set up and run your Citra emulator so without further ado let's go all right so the first thing you are going to want to do is head on over to the Citra website. You will need the Citra emulator in order to play your 3DS games on your PC. Go here first and download the Citra emulator. Also keep in mind that when installing your Citra emulator and it's not working, you will need Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable 2015. Without this, your Citra emulator will not work, it will not run. There are other tutorials showing you how to install this because sometimes there are issues with installing this Microsoft Redistribute. But if you have problems installing the Microsoft Redistributable C++ 2015, I've left a link down in the description for you so that you can go and see a video. It will help you install it if you're having problems. So you're welcome. To those of you who have already downloaded and or installed the Citra emulator, we can continue. So once you've downloaded and installed the Citra emulator, you will get a folder like this. Keep in mind that the best install location is either your desktop or your documents area. No matter where you may install it, I would say that the C drive is the best place that you can put your Citra emulator so that you can get the maximum performance out of it and make sure that it's working properly. Once you've installed it, you will get a folder like this. You will get the Citra folder. You want to open it. Within the folder, you will get a canary build and a nightly build. The nightly build is the standard stable build. It's not updated much, but it does work. If you'd like to use it, you can. But we're gonna focus on the canary build. This build constantly gets updates and you can play online with your friends. So this is the one we're gonna be focusing on. Once you open the canary build folder, you will see three icons of the Citra Emulator EXE. You wanna hit the Citra QT, but before clicking on the Citra Emulator QT EXE, you will need a user folder. Now I've left links to my particular user folder that I use to get the Citra Emulator running at Ace Point. So before you run the Citra Emulator, make sure you install the user folder within the canary build or the nightly build whichever one you are using the only thing you need to do to install it is drop it within the nightly build folder or the canary build folder and you're pretty much done remember the links for the user folder are down 
in the links in the description. This will fix black screens and this will clear up any issues that you have with errors trying to run your games. Okay. Now before you start your Citra emulator, there's another thing that you'll need to do to get your Citra emulator running at its maximum optimal performance. You're going to right click on the Citra emulator QT EXE. You're going to scroll all the way down to properties. Click on compatibility settings and then hit the little checkbox that says run this program as administrator hit apply and then OK. This will assure that every time you run your Citra emulator it will be running at its maximum ultimate performance so you won't get any reduction in performance depending on what your computer is capable of and what your graphics card is capable of as well. So once you've done these steps you're pretty much finished here. You can now open your Citra emulator. Once you open your Citra emulator, you will get a window like this. If you don't have any games, you won't get anything in this box. It will just be blank and nothing will be here. I have games, so of course you will see games here. If you don't have any games, or if you have games and you have them in a specific location, the only thing you will need to do is click the folder or the plus sign and add a folder location wherever you may have placed your Citra games and then that will be the file location for your games so that you can see them here. So wherever you place them and wherever you've placed your folder, click the folder or the plus sign and select the folder with your games containing within that folder and that is what will appear here on the screen. I thought I'd add this just so you know. Also as you saw when I opened the Citra emulator it updated and it will continue to update. The Canary build constantly gets updates and it's the best running performing emulator at this point. So this is why I use it specifically. Now let's go over and get some configuration set up. First you want to click on emulation and then configure. Click on your input settings. This is where you will be placing or inputting your controller inputs for whatever controller that you may be using. If you're on a PC, a Microsoft Xbox 360 controller is recommended. It would automatically recognize this controllers. If you're using a third party controller, then you may have to add some extra adjustments to make sure the controller is working, like going to your devices and then setting it up that way. I will make a tutorial showing you how to set up third party controllers for the Citra emulator, but I'm not going to put it in this video. It'll be too long to add that and that's two tutorials in one. Let's focus on this for now. So if you have an Xbox 360 controller, just input the buttons that you want and then you're set here. Next we're going to head over to our graphics tab. Here the Citra team has added and implemented some new features. As you can see, they've implemented a shader emulation, which now you can choose between your GPU or your CPU in order to get your Citra emulator running at its maximum speed. If you choose your CPU, which is recommended if you have an i5 or an i7, which will get you up to speeds, that's recommended only if you have a higher performing CPU. But if you have a higher performing GPU, it is recommended that you use your GPU. Utilizing your GPU even if you have a higher performing CPU will get you even better results. This is why I have decided to use my GPU because I get even better results even though I have a high performing CPU. So GPU is recommended but if you have a really terrible graphics card then it is recommended that you use your CPU. But if you have an okay graphics card, then you should use your GPU because your computer will utilize everything. So it is recommended that you should use your GPU because it'll work best when doing so. 
Now, if you have a really, really terrible computer, you can untick this box that says limit frames. Now, this will take frame limitations off of your Citra emulator and get it running really fast, as fast as your hardware can get you to run on your Citra emulator. So keep this in mind if you're still having problems, if you're still lagging and you have issues with running your game and it's slow, take that off and your lag should improve you should get better results but i haven't had or heard of any issues of people having a really bad experience on the citrus emulator but just in case the option is there for you once you selected either your gpu or your cpu you're going to hit ok and we're done here now the only thing left to do is to test the game so let's run metroid returns and let's see how our newly installed Citra emulator performs. As you can see it is running smoothly and it looks pretty good too now you can play all of your games at the best that the stitcher emulator can offer well that pretty much wraps everything up with this tutorial I hope it was pretty helpful to you guys if you have any questions make sure to leave those comments down below in the comment section I want to know if this worked for you also I want to know if you are having any problems, if this tutorial was helpful to you, and also if you enjoyed the tutorial as well. And if you enjoyed the tutorial and it was helpful to you, and or if you want to leave a like, make sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure to share and subscribe for more videos like these. Until next time. This has been K7. Peace you guys. Take care and enjoy using the newly maxed out performing Citra emulator. Take care. Peace. Hey guys, it's me, K7. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like and hit the notification bell for more videos like these. Okay guys, I'll see you guys next time. Later.